Secretary. Now, did anyone ever hear of Mad Dog Mattis? No. He's doing a great job. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Fighting Joe Dunford. You know Fighting Joe. Air Force Academy. We've done them all, and, and we're doing them. So uh, we'll see you guys very the soon. Secret Service. But today, and I hate to say, veteran of the Third Marine I'm Aircraft proud to say wing. that we have General several Tex, really you know tough General, Marines you know, serving in our administration. A, so not Big only General John Kelly, Tex a, right? but we know him. Defense so Tex, Se Secretary. Now, did anyone our administration ever hear of is stacked Mad with Dog Marines Mattis, because no. Marines. Are the kind of people you want? He's doing a great job, Chairman of the me, Joint you don't Chiefs ever of Staff. Want to be on the other side General of Fighting, fighting Joe Marine. Dunford, you know Fighting Joe. Painful. Air Force Academy. We've the Marines done them all are the first doing direct battle and, so, uh, and the we'll first to fight the soon. Secret Service. Marines today, never give up. And never give say, veteran of the Marine 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 Defense oh, Sec Secretary, now you today. Love. The USA. And as your Commander-in-Chief, just like every President before me, I have no greater comfort than knowing I can have absolute faith in you. In 1918, when foreign military aggression threatened our way of life, we called on the Marines. Marine Sergeant Dan Daly, urged his men through those horrible trenches with the courageous battle cry that you all know very well. Do you want to live forever? That was the question and that was the cry. In 1945, when we needed someone to scale the cliffs and to plant the flag on a rugged mountain peak, in Iwo Jima, we called on the Marines. In 1950, when setbacks loomed in Korea, although we're doing a pretty good job with Korea right now. Um, and hopefully something positive will come out of it. Hopefully something very positive is going to come out of it. We'll see. And we're prepared for anything, right? We always have to be prepared for anything. But I really believe something very positive could happen. Great for Korea, North and South, and great for the world, and great for this country. So when it loomed in Korea, and when we needed warriors who would fight against all odds in the chosen reservoir, we called on the Marines, the legendary men of the frozen chosen. In 1962, when America needed a man to board a rocket, launch into space, and orbit the Earth for the first time, we called on a Marine, the one and only John Glenn. The legendary acts like these of sacrifice, courage, of heroism are the proud legacy of the United States Marines. Can be very proud. Your heritage drives you, your heroes inspire you, and your actions immortalize you in the pages of American history, incredible history. And every day you push yourselves to new heights of excellence and new depths of courage, keeping America safe, America strong, and America free. You honor your duty to your country. Now we must honor our duty to you. For too long, the men and women of the United States Armed Forces have been asked to do more with less. You've borne the costs of underinvestment and deferred modernization, and also deferred maintenance. You've endured longer and more frequent deployments. You've spent countless hours fixing and maintaining old equipment. You have fewer ships than we should, fewer planes than we should, and you have fewer of you than we should. Today, I am very pleased to report that all of that is changing, and all of that, as you have seen, is changing quickly.
The Trump administration is committed to a policy of peace through strength. We have finally ended the devastating defense sequester that you've lived with for many years. We are now undertaking the largest military buildup since Ronald Reagan and one of the largest buildups we've ever had in the history of our nation. Last year, I requested and received an additional $21 billion to address urgent readiness shortfalls. The two-year budget agreement I just reached with Congress will provide $700 billion in defense funding this year, the largest ever, larger by far than any country has ever spent. And next year, we will raise that number to $716 billion. That's a lot of money. Even for you, that's a lot of money. We're also investing in our greatest weapon of all, our most powerful weapon, our most beautiful weapon, our most brilliant weapon, you. In 2019, we want to give you your largest pay raise in over a decade. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. And we're building new F-35 Joint Strike Fighters, and we're going to send them right here to Miramar, along with lots of other fighters and lots of other weaponry. Weaponry like we've never had before or sent before. They'll be sent also all over the world. And I understand some of you really great pilots could use some new CH-53s. Is that a correct statement? You want to see some new ones? Huh? That's, <laughs> that's, that's the group. Well, you're getting them, okay? You know, you're brand new, right off the line. We're getting a lot of great stuff. I'm happy to report that in the near future, Miramar is getting brand new CH-53K King Stallions, the big ones you're getting. They'll be sent soon. They're coming. They're being made. We're also modernizing our nuclear capabilities and rebuilding our nuclear infrastructure. We're investing more money than we have ever done before because we have to be so far ahead of any other country. It's a capability we never even want to think about using, but we have to be prepared. And in a nuclear front, we are so far and will be so far ahead of any other country. We have no choice. We've increased investment in hypersonic weapon systems by 50 percent, and we're accelerating development of hypersonic system that can fly five times the speed of sound. That's pretty quick. In space, the United States is going to do Colonel Glenn Proud. We are finally going to lead again you see what's happening. You see the rockets going up left and right. You haven't seen that for a long time. Very soon, we're going to Mars. You wouldn't have been going to Mars if my opponent won. That I can tell you. You wouldn't even be thinking about it. You wouldn't be thinking about it. My new national strategy for space recognizes that Space is a war-fighting domain, just like the land, air, and sea. We may even have a space force. We'll develop another one. Space force. We have the Air Force. We'll have the Space Force. We have the Army, the Navy. You know, I was saying it the other day because we're doing a tremendous amount of work in space. I said, maybe we need a new force. We'll call it the Space Force. And I was not really serious. And then I said, what a great idea. Maybe we'll have to do that. That could happen. That could be the big breaking story. Look at all those people back there. Look at that. Oh, that fake news. Oh.
They know. They understand. <laughs> so think of that. Space Force, because we're spending a lot, and we have a lot of private money coming in. Tremendous. You saw what happened the other day, and tremendous success. From the very beginning, many of our astronauts have been soldiers and sailors, airmen, Coast Guardsmen, and Marines. And our service members will be vital to ensuring America continues to lead the way into the stars. We're going to lead the way in space. We're way, way behind. And we're catching up fast. So fast that nobody even believes it. I also have released a new national security strategy that underscores the vital importance of homeland security. It's all about homeland security, right? We protect people all over the world, but we're going to protect them better than ever before. Our homeland. It's about time, right? Nobody's going to mess with us. Dangerous criminal and terrorist organizations relentlessly seek to exploit our immigration system. I've just come from a trip to the border, where I met with our wonderful border agents, the Border Patrol and the ICE agents, unbelievable people, and reviewed prototypes of a new physical wall that will protect our border and protect our country. We don't have a choice. You need it. We need it for the drugs. We need it for the gangs. We need it for lots of reasons. We have to have it. It'll be 99.5% successful. People won't be able to come over it. The drugs will stop by a lot, although we have to get a lot tougher with drug dealers. Have to. But that wall will stop so much. And we looked at the different prototypes, and it was fascinating. And we have two or three that really work. We had people trying to scale. We've done them every way. You know, I'm a builder. What I do best is build. Okay? You know, other people that build a wall and then say, you know, it doesn't work. Well, wait a minute. We just built a thousand miles of wall. Well, we made a mistake. It doesn't work. We should have done it a different way. We're doing it before we build. Better idea, right? Do you think? A little better. We're going to have a great wall. It's going to be very effective. It's going to stop people from, you're not going to see them climbing over this wall too easily. That I can tell you. I've also called on Congress to close dangerous loopholes that are exploited by traffickers, smugglers, and cartels. Human trafficking in this modern age is worse throughout the world than it's ever been. Who would think that? In this modern human trafficking is worse than it's ever been. Each of you has sworn an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Our task in government is to ensure that we preserve what we have gained through incredible sacrifice of you and many people before you. That is why my administration is confronting sanctuary city policies that nullify federal law violate our Constitution, and threaten the safety and security of our nation. They shield criminals. We can't do that. And that is why we are asking Congress to ensure that no federal funds subsidize this dangerous and unlawful behavior. We want to protect you, and we want to protect all of our families. We want to protect our nation. We're also taking action to protect our homeland from rogue actors overseas through enhanced missile defense. We're spending a tremendous amount on missile defense, and that's money well spent. And it's also jobs. We make them here. We make them right here. It's also jobs. We're adding new interceptors, improving sensors, and advancing radar capabilities by many, many times. I have empowered our commanders in Afghanistan with the authorities they need to win, enabling the full might of the American military.
The coalition to defeat ISIS has now liberated almost 100 percent of the territory previously held by these terrorists in Syria and Iraq. We did a great job. You did a great job. You did a great job. Great. They would have been around for a long time, and they were getting bigger and stronger, and you saw it. And we knocked the hell out of them. We knocked them. I want to say a special thanks to all of the men and women from the 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing, Miramar Air Station, and stations across the San Diego region, especially the two Miramar-based squadrons who have just returned from deployment, the Death Rattlers and the Greyhawks. Where are you? Right? Good. It's a good-looking group. Good. That's great. Thank you. Great job. Your service has been extraordinary. We won't let up until ISIS is completely destroyed. ISIS never thought this would happen. They never got hit like this. We took off the gloves. In one year, we did more damage to ISIS than other administration, a certain other administration did in many years. We took off the gloves. We're also working with allies and partners to block Iran's path to a nuclear weapon and confront its sponsorship of terror and bloodshed all around the world. Everywhere we go in the Middle East, it's Iran, Iran, Iran. Behind every problem is Iran. Well, we're dealing with it in a very serious fashion. One of the worst deals I've ever seen was the Iran deal. $150 billion we gave them. For what? With your skill and your bravery, I know that the United States military will forever remain the greatest fighting force in the history of the world. And we're making it now with $700 billion and $716 billion the following year. We're giving you the tools that they were trying to take away from you. So important. And the Marines, as always, will be the tip of the spear. So to the fighting men and women of Miramar and all across the San Diego area, we must all think bigger, build faster, push farther, dare higher and be greater than ever, ever, ever before. Each one of you is vital to our mission. Your fighter pilots, helo pilots, mechanics, engineers, hospital corpsmen, sailors, and sergeants. But above all, you are great American patriots, just great American patriots. You race into battle, rush into fire, fly into danger, and you give all to defend our nation, our people, and the American way of life. And they love you. A century ago, every man who heeded Sergeant Daly's battle cry was pushed on to victory and to glory by that same love of country. As war engulfed, Iwo Jima, our young heroes, set their eyes upon the same beautiful sight. Red, white, and blue perched atop that incredible rocky peak. And when Colonel Glenn looked down on the United States as he soared beyond the limits of our atmosphere, he was filled with the same pride of one beating American heart. Our pride makes us strong. Our strength keeps us free. And because of heroes like you, our freedom will never die. We are becoming stronger and stronger and stronger as a nation. And while a lot of you don't think about it, 
Our economy is setting records. Our unemployment is at all-time lows. African-American unemployment is the lowest it's been in history. Hispanic unemployment is the lowest it's been in history. Women unemployment is the lowest it's been in 18 years. And we're setting records. And last week, we had over 150 million people working. That's more people working in our country than ever before in its history. We are making a lot of progress for you. And all across this nation, we pray for our country, and we thank God for our United States Marines. Today and every day, we pledge to remain always faithful. It is an honor to be with you. You are very, very special people. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America. Thank you. Thank you very much. Station Miramar, President Trump speaking live uh, during his first trip to California as president. So uh, this is Right Side Broadcasting. We're going to do a little post show here, hear what you thought about the speech. So if you have comments, write to me on Twitter at Lookner at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. It's going to be a bit of an abbreviated post show today because very soon we're going to be starting our special election night coverage of the P Pennsylvania special election. I will be uh, doing that. And so as soon as we're done with this, we're going to get that set up and get it on the air as soon as possible. Before we get to their, your comments about this speech, I want to say a quick thank you to Christine Bestgen, Pam Peacock, and Vince Piper. They all made donations to Right Side during President Trump's speech. We really appreciate it. Your donations are what keeps us on the air. That's what allows us to bring you an alternative to the mainstream media to cover all of President Trump's events, including the rallies and other events as well, like the election coverage tonight, all kinds of different news events. So we really appreciate your, your, appreciate your donations because that's what keeps us on the air. If you'd like to donate, go to the bottom of the YouTube chat, click on the dollar sign at the bottom of the YouTube chat. It's a little dollar sign there. Or go to rsbn.tv slash donate, rsbn.tv slash donate. And a big shout out to our moderators uh, who are moderating the chat right now. I know Barbara Braley is there. JC, Common Sense, and Gleno on the website, uh, Jan on YouTube, so thank you. And as a reminder, we will have live coverage of the election returns last tonight. We're going to be starting early. The polls close at 8. Our coverage is going to start at latest at 6.30 Eastern. We're going to try to get on a little before that, but please join us. Join me and Joe uh, for our election coverage tonight, a special election coverage from Pennsylvania starting in about an hour. So very soon after this post show ends, we're going to start up again. And don't wait for the YouTube notification because YouTube hasn't been sending out notifications lately. The, 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 the uh, item is uh, the, the Sorry, the event is already posted on YouTube. You can see it there. So, uh, so find it yourself. Don't wait for YouTube to tell it it started because they might not ever tell you. So we're taking your comments on the air. What do you think about President Trump's speech? Uh, he uh, tailored his speech to the military audience, talked about how he wants to spend more on the military in the coming years. He said he's, the U.S. defense spending will go up to $716 billion next year. That's what he said. He said he wants to give a pay raise to people in the military. Um, he talked about what a great job they do. He also talked about the idea of starting a space force at some, at some point. Uh, he said he hadn't been serious when he first pitched the idea of a space force, but he says we have the, the Air Force, we'll have the space force. He said that we might have that soon. 
And he talked about some different other things. I don't think he mentioned Rex Tillerson, uh, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, as you probably know, was fired this morning. Uh, I don't think that came up in the speech. Uh, but anyways, would love to hear what you thought about the speech. Uh, Joey Diaz says, I want to see if uh, President Trump can actually take us to Mars. He did mention Mars in the speech. He said, I had a note written down here about it. Where is it? I thought I had a note written down. Uh, oh, he said, very soon we're going to Mars. You wouldn't be going to Mars if my opponent won. That's what President Trump said. Uh, let's see here. What else did he mention? Oh, uh, okay. Oh, Joe, I got your email. Joe, thank you. Uh, let's see here. He also uh, gave a shout out to Chief of Staff, Staff John Kelly. He said, I think he likes what you, I think he likes, uh, I think I might have copied this down wrong. Um, I think I think it was the quote was, I think he likes what you do better than what he does, but he's doing a great job. He misses you, talking about the Marines. He also said Chief of Staff, uh, retired U.S. Marine General, General Kelly, is doing a great job in Washington. So we want to hear what do you think about President Trump's speech? Uh, he also was in California earlier today looking at border wall uh, prototypes. Let me see if I can find you a picture of that. I bet I can. I thought I could. Here we go. I believe this is a photo. I think this is a photo from earlier today with President Trump seeing the wall prototypes. I believe that's from today. If not, I saw one from today that looked just like that. So I think that's from today. And he's also going to be hosting a fundraiser tonight, President Trump in California. Let's see if I can find you a little information on that. Oh, here it is. I actually found. Uh, it looks like Kenneth Vogel posted this photo of the invitation. So you can see it says... Invitation evening with Donald Trump in Beverly Hills. This is not cheap. Um, round table, entire round table is 250 grand. Photo op, 100 grand per couple. Dinner, 35 grand per person or 50,000 per couple. So that is a fundraiser tonight in Beverly Hills for President Trump. So he'll be doing that. I think he's coming home after that or going back to D.C. after that. So we're going to be on a few more minutes here, and then I'm going to get off the air to do prep for our live special election coverage, Pennsylvania election results. We really hope you join us for that. Again, I'm going to be coming on no later than 630 Eastern time, hopefully a little bit before then. And we're going to bring you all the election results. Really looking forward to uh, doing that with you tonight. So please join us for that here at Right Side Broadcasting. Also, uh, subscribe if you'd like to us on YouTube. Click the notifications bell, even though they sometimes don't send you notifications. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook, Right Side Broadcasting, on Twitter, at RSB Network, and on Periscope, RSBN TV. And Joe Seals is producing right now. He's going to be producing tonight. Joe Seals, uh, CEO of Right Side, has prepared some extra cool graphics for tonight's broadcast. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing those. I've seen little snippets of them, little previews of them. I'm looking forward to seeing the real things. You can follow Joe at at Joe Seals, at Joe, S-E-A-L-E-S. John says, don't forget the United States Space Force. You might have heard me, might have not heard me mention it, John. I talked about how President Trump mentioned the idea of a Space Force doing, during the, uh, the uh, stream, stream, during the speech. He said, we might have a Space Force soon. Joey Diaz writes it and says, President Trump is a builder. He's built a successful business. Our viewer, Pam7601, in the chat room says, God bless those awesome Marines. These speeches are always a morale boost for the president and for the military members.
Uh, Joe Churko wrote and said, please remind your audience. This is what Joe Jerko, Joe Churko wants you to email your senators to build the wall. So that's a message from our viewer, Joe Churko. He wants to encourage you to email your senators to build the wall. J. Mix Jr. says, take a nap, Lookner. So the thing is, you know, I think what happens here is, is you, you don't, can't see this, but I'm sitting, I'm wide awake. But there are very bright lights because this is a, we're shooting a broadcast. If we don't have very bright lights, I would look incredibly dark and you couldn't really see me. But because of the bright, very, 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 very bright lights, uh, that tends to make me squint a little bit, especially when we just, we just began the broadcast. So it might look like I'm tired, but I'm not. It's the lighting. Now, there are times, talk to me in five hours if we're still on the air, and I'll probably be tired, but I'm not at this point. Okay, I'm going to give the last call for comments. We got to get off this, we got to end this broadcast in a couple minutes just so I can go with Joe and prep for the special election coverage. So, last call if you have comments, message us at, uh, message me on Twitter at Lookner at L O O K N E R. And, um, also, again, thank you so much for the, to those who donated during the broadcast. We are viewer supported. That's how we can bring you coverage. That's how we can provide you an alternative to the CNN and the Fox and the MSNBC, how we can go to the rallies and bring you the whole rally and interview people before and after the rally um, and uh, cover stories in depth like we spent a bunch of time on the Austin package bombings yesterday, way more than I think the mainstream media did. Uh, but we can only do that because you donate to us and you support us. So if you want to donate, go to the bottom of the YouTube chat, click on the dollar sign at the bottom of the YouTube chat. Even small donations are welcome. Or go to rsbn.tv slash donate, rsbn.tv slash donate. Reactionary Barry says TFW, TFW, I think that's that, that feel when uh, Halo becomes a real thing. He means the video game Halo. I guess he's talking about the Space Force. That's from Reactionary Barry. Oh, and we apologize for the beginning of the speech. You know, the White House was streaming the speech today, so we were just like, well, we will, uh, we will take the White House feed as we customarily do. Uh, and as we're allowed to do, and we'll take their we'll take we'll take their feed, and we'll bring that to you. They didn't start their, their streaming the speech when the speech started, so we were sitting here, and President Trump started to speak, and we're like, why hasn't the White House started streaming the speech? Now they did soon after, but we apologize. They, they, that that usually doesn't happen, so we apologize. It came on a a little bit late with this speech. All right, I think we're going to wrap this up here. I'm going to prepare for the special election coverage. Joe is going to prepare with me. So please join us. It will be 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Oh, a black screen. Whoa. A black screen that says play this game for one minute. That's really odd. Take a picture of that, Joe. It says play this game for one minute. I've never seen that. Or that's an ad. Oh, I'm sorry. That was an ad. It just says... The ads on the screen. But Joe, another black screen. Amazing. So there you go. Hopefully we don't have too many of those during. Oh, while I'm on the topic, I love telling you this. Please complain to YouTube about the black screens. It's so easy to complain because they'll never stop because they're kind of shadow banning us at this point with all of their uh, efforts against us. But what you do, if you want to complain to YouTube about the endless uh, black screens, here's our broadcast. What I did is I just went back a few seconds. I paused on the black screen, which YouTube is putting on, on our broadcast. And all you do is you click on the right, you right click on the video like this, go to troubleshoot playback issue, click on that. And look, a little, a thing comes up and it's a window comes up and it says, type your comment. And it already has a screenshot of the black screen. And I'll say, why can't you stupid idiots fix this black screen problem. It only happens to right side broadcasting. You could fix this if you wanted to, but you don't. 
It's infuriating. I am starting to hate YouTube and I can't wait for the day you have competition and go out of business. And then you just click on send. There's a send button at the bottom. You click it. I'll click on it. There you go. I just sent that feedback in. So just do that. It's very easy. Anyways. So um so uh, we're going to wrap up this stream right now. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching this speech. Uh, and also, um, also, again, please join us very soon, very, very soon. Within the next hour, we will be back on the air with our live special election coverage. Can't wait for it. I uh, hope you join us for that. For now, thanks for the, to people who donated. Thanks for everybody who watched. And uh, thanks for those who sent in your comments. Thanks to our moderators, of course, who do an amazing job. And uh, everybody out there. All right, I got to get off the air so we can prep for this special election coverage. Join us in a little bit for that. For now, for me, for Joe, have a great night. And I hope, I really hope we see you just in a little bit for our Pennsylvania election coverage. Join us for that. We'll see you soon here at Right Side Broadcasting.